Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's another beautiful evening and wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, January cold day here in Chicago and most of the United States. Uh, and we have some great DJs here to keep the conversation, conversation nice and warm. Um, as always, I appreciate you being here, and hopefully you're enjoying yourself watching the show. Uh, we have a returning guest, actually one of the original members of the DJ Roundtable, uh, DJ Tommy. He is a another fellow Chicago DJ, and we've actually uh, done some gigs together. Great guy. Um, he is uh, up in Wisconsin uh, at school, and he... Uh, uh, he does DJ up there and I get to see him on social media and have fun with it. Right now he has his camera off cause he's at a location. Can't have his camera on, but uh, hopefully we'll have his camera on in a little short while, but I uh, want to welcome him back to the show and I welcome everyone else to the show as well. If you're watching this here on Twitch, make sure you click that uh, follow button here on Twitch. If you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor before you do anything else. Click that subscribe button. Make sure you smash the like button, put the thumbs up, and hit the bell icon. So that way you know when we have this show on uh, YouTube, which is going to be, I don't know, uh, next week. Every Monday I try to drop them at, at noon. Uh, there was just a show yesterday. That is a recording of this show. If you want to watch the show live, come over on Twitch on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock. And you can ask a question in the chat. And I have the chat open over here all the time. And if you have a question on YouTube, put it down below. We have plenty of responses, which we're going to get to throughout the night. Uh, we're starting everything off tonight. Uh, and you have to excuse my I am under the weather. Um, so if you hear me cough, sneeze, it's not the same cough from before, which was from last time I was being sick. I got sick again. So, Yes. Um, I'm still battling it and, uh, it's on the, uh, the last edge of it. So it's not fun, but I will get through. Uh, one of the things was, uh, DJ Brentley, uh, gave me, uh, said a story, um, about a DJ who, uh, set up at a local mall, a event and somehow or another, a, um, an incident happened at the mall and a child was injured and was taken to the hospital. Um, the one thing is that the uh, mall um, was asking uh, DJ uh, Brentley uh, if he can come in and replace the, said DJ and wanted to make sure if he had insurance because the other DJ was not insured. So the question I have for the group, and I'm going to answer, I'm going to answer first because this is a very passionate thing I have, is about insurance. And do you have it? And what kind of insurance do you have? Do you have just liability or do you have full coverage? Like myself, I have full business coverage. So I have more than just um, let's say uh liability. It's like driving a car. If you're driving a car, you want to have full coverage. You don't want to just have liability insurance because, again, you're not protecting your gear. You're not protecting everything. Now, if you can't afford full coverage, you really want to look at getting it if possible. Liability is least amount, but, again, you want to kind of like look at it's protecting you and your business. And I am one of those people that are a very big supporter of having insurance on your business because again it's going to protect you protect your clients and protect those who are around so with the person bringing this to me dj brian i'm going to start with him what about insurance what, what do you have what do you uh what do you cover and what do you try to uh look for when you do insurance and you're muted so so the one thing i did when i went for my insurance was the simplest Set up of it all possible. And I went to one agent who, you know, at the time had my renters for my house and my uh, one of my cars, and I presented them with everything I needed coverage for. 
and, and it's not I, I'm paying I want to say like 175 a month but it covers my house my DJ equipment with that's stored in my house so if anybody breaks in and my stuff gets stolen I'm, uh, that's all covered for my house including like work you know all my suits anything for work um when it comes to my garage I took out a separate policy on my insurance for my garage because I'm using it like a warehouse and I boosted that insurance up higher than the average person would because of how much I've got in the garage. And then um, with business liability, uh, one of the venues I'm at, I think we need a mill or a mill five per instance. So I could have 10 people get hurt at, you know, or everybody get hurt at my event from my equipment and everyone in the event is covered up to a million dollars per person. And that was what celebrations originally asked for. And then as I started going to other venues, some had less, some had a different, slightly different. So I went back to my insurance agent. I'm like, how can you encompass anything they're throwing at us? And he's like, here's what I did. And he rewrote my policy. So, and like I said, at $175 a month, it's not cheap, but anything that happens to anybody, anything that happens to my gear, you know, even in transportation of said gear, I am so covered right now that I feel very comfortable with what I have. That nothing like what happened at the mall, for example, no one will get hurt. And knock on wood, in, you know, seven and a half years of doing this on my own independently, you know, and then joining Ever After in the last couple of years, I haven't had any problems with my, you know, like one light stand got knocked over once, but no one got hurt. And surprisingly, and this is why I'm a big fan of Chauvet, only thing that broke was one of the plastic covers on one of the 56s. So, and it went, it, it took a six and a half, seven foot tumble like that. So, whatever, uh, I didn't have to claim that and haven't had to turn anything in in the seven and a half years I've been on my own. So, I would, and honestly, I would rather have it than not. And, Part of me that did make me change my policy about, yeah, 2019 going into 2020 was when we hit a deer. Uh, <clears throat> I come to find out that that was one of the things that wasn't in my comprehensive policy. $2,200, and it was a coin toss whether to total the van out or not. And it was fairly close to, you know, maxing it out. And I figured, you know, I know what the car does. I know how it runs. So I just went and spent the 2200 bucks and fixed it. If it came up again like that, I probably wouldn't, or I would really have to think about it now because the car has got almost 300 on it. And I just put a few grand into uh, completely like new alignment suspension on both ends. So yeah, but having that security blanket is so nice. And for us that are on the road a lot, the other aspect of it, I went and got AAA. It's fifty nine dollars a year. I've used it once this year when my van's uh, serpentine belt went. They came and got it from my house, took it down to the shop, and that was it. And that's so best the, money. Hours. And that's the thing is, you know, being prepared is another uh, thing. But uh, how many venues do you see? require insurance when you run into apparently is it, you would you say 20 percent 30 percent 50 percent all the ones i go to regularly uh it's a mandatory requirement so i can't think of any that i i mean the ones i can think of that don't ask for it are the party barns in the middle of nowhere legions vfws those are the only ones at least in my market, that aren't asking for it. What I usually and, see, what I usually see, is a lot of municipal facilities, you know, owned by a government agency, a village, town, city, whatever, um, and they usually want to make sure that you are insured because it also helps keep the, um, which we'll talk a little bit later, the DJs who like to. Uh, stretch the truth a little bit and think they're bigger and better than what they are and actually be very cheap and not give what they give. So it, it's one of the things that uh, I think I feel insurance is very important. And my insurance for my business is 
$2,100. And I have business insurance like Inland Marine, which is called for uh, covering a product. Uh, I have a $2 million liability policy. Um, there's a lot of things I have in there because mm -hmm. it's what when I go places if it's required. One of the things also it's in there is uh, actually uh, insurance uh, for, uh, again, uh, medical um, for myself if I get hurt. So kind of like a workman's comp kind of thing, it protects me. So there's a lot to go through with insurance and a lot you want to look at. But you want to talk and partner with an insurance person who deals with business insurance, especially covered with DJs, because every state is different. And like State Farm here, which we have for our personal stuff, will not cover a business like a DJ. They'll cover other businesses, but it won't cover a DJ here in Illinois. So we had to go to another insurance company, which my insurance agent always said, no one ever complained they had too much insurance when something happened. They always complained they were undercovered and they didn't have the right coverage. Like Brentley just said, he ran into a deer, $2,200 out of his pocket versus either they would probably, you know, 500 bucks out of his pocket or whatever, or they would tow the vehicle, whatever the insurance company decided to do. But he would have been covered for that then. He would have more, re, you know, more, more coverage and more protection from what happens that put money out of his pocket. So I'm going to go to the great state of Texas. And I'm going to ask you, sir, um, what about you? You know, what about, what do you think uh, insurance? Well, how do you insured? What do you have for insurance? Do you have insurance? And do you see venues asking for insurance? Uh, yeah, sure. So I do have um, insurance. Um, I have it through a a company that actually is like for entertainers and stuff like that. Like one of those specific companies, not a, like a state farm or a big, big box name like that. Um, but yeah, so mine's strictly just for like my events and things like that. So I, I'm covered for the whole year. It's like a general commercial liability. So I'm actually looking at it right now. It's like a million per each occurrence kind of deal. Um, like hundred K on one, on one portion, 200 K I'm sorry, two, two, uh, two mil for like personal injury and things like that. General, um, stuff like that as well. So pretty decent coverage. And um, yeah, I mean, I have a good amount of venues asking for it. Probably I'd say percentage wise, about 40 to 50% of the, my venues are asking for it. Um, they used to not ask for it as much, but I also wasn't doing necessarily the most well-known and like better venues in the area. So as I've progressed, my business has grown and I've gotten more connections with the more well-known venues you know, they're more established. They know what they're doing. They're know they know how to, you know, CYA, they know how to cover themselves. So um, they always ask for the insurance and uh, I just send it on over to them and uh, get it over to them. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's a good thing to have for sure. Um, yeah. Like you said, it's a peace of mind kind of deal, whether your equipment kind of craps out on you, a guest breaks something or something happens at the venue. It's just, I think it's definitely good to have. I think you're on a mute, buddy, if you're talking. You might be on mute. I'm sorry. I was blowing my nose. I didn't want everyone to hear it. Uh, but <laughs> it's one of the things that it's good to uh, it, it's good to have that. And it's good to know that you have the coverage and that you feel good walking to a place in case something happens. So I'm going to go to Dwayne in Ohio. Uh, what about you, sir? What about insurance? Do you have it? Do you hear venues asking for it? What What do you see? I have I have had a um, venue ask for it, but I do have insurance. Now I used to I had three different kinds. The first one was one of those ones where if you need insurance, you can like sign up and they'll go active right away, and you can cancel any time. And that one was they'll cover you for um, liability and then your equipment. But the catch is your equipment couldn't be couldn't be stolen or it couldn't happen um, in your car or at your house and all that stuff. So that was, you know, what it is. But then I went to through my um, nationwide insurance and they wouldn't cover my equipment. So they sent me to another, I think it was Allstate, it was somebody. But they didn't cover inch the equipment, but they took care of, of the liability. So I rolled with that for a year. But then I just recently stopped with them and got my equipment. So right now, the one I have now deals with my equipment. 
And I think it's a 500 deductible on top of that. So. And that's the thing is that that's, that's, that's very important to know. Sometimes, uh, you know, the big insurance companies won't cover someone special like a DJ. DJs consider especially, and they will cover it. So you need to find an insurance company that will cover a, a business like what you have versus, you know, uh, someone who um, may or may not uh, cover any, you know, that, again, that's talking to your insurance, insurance agent. And the other insurance that is uh, just, uh, you know, as needed. I know guys who do that, you know, get one day policies, two day policies, whatever. But what happens in the meantime, something happens, what happens to on the way there and back? What happens if, the day before, day after something happens, you're not covered. And that's a lot of money sitting there on equipment and liability. Because, again, uh, it's all friends and family just to the lawsuit start and the lawyers start talking to you and say, hey, uh, yeah, we're suing you because of X, Y, Z. Anyone could sue you anytime. The thing is that having insurance, at least you have some kind of protection as long as your policy covers that area. And my camera just turned off for whatever reason. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> Got to love technology. But uh, Matt, all the way out in California. Um, there we go. Yeah. What about you, sir? What, about, what about insurance for you? Uh, I just have liability um, because uh, I'm not paying for full coverage. Um, I had it for a while from, I think it was maybe Allstate. And when I did have a piece of equipment go down, the deductible was worth more than the equipment was worth. So or it costs more than the equipment was worth. So I pretty much canceled that. Um, it's peace of mind, yes, but um, I, like I said, as long as I've been doing this, I, it's in our contract that the client pays for any piece of equipment that's damaged. Um, I have full coverage auto, including any gear that I'm hauling. So it's like a business policy for auto insurance, uh, also covers heavy vehicles. So when my trailer got, uh, when the U-Haul trailer I was in that I don't have coverage for with U-Haul, uh, was damaged. I didn't have to pay anything when I returned it because my policy covered it, even though I wasn't at fault anyway. Um, so I do have a 50 K storage unit policy though. So if something were to go missing, I could just say, Hey, it was in my storage unit and they don't really ask questions. Well, again, you can call, you can get any insurance you want and how much you want and how much you feel is best for you, but just having liability again. Yeah, I, liability, like I, I, I get it. I, I need to maybe look into it, but, uh, I mean, I pay 15 bucks a month for my insurance, which is, uh, plenty for me and, uh, covers every venue that I need to with the, the amounts that I need and they can generate all the policies or generate all the custom certificates and custom wordage, but I'll look into the full coverage at some point. I'm going to NAM, so I'll, I'll look for some, uh, some insurance people there. Yeah. yeah. NAM is what, two weeks? Yeah. So um, they always have like specialized insurance providers for musicians and gear industry people so which, maybe i'll look which, there but. which which right now i'm telling you right now when you go to nam you need to take pictures and when you come back we'll be having a nam show i'll have a whole uh i'm gonna scope it out on thursday by myself and then my buddy is coming on friday and we're gonna film uh i got one of those new dji pocket uh pocket three the gimbal yeah. with the creator edition and uh it's really fun it, the picture quality is phenomenal and looks better than your iphone and uh, it's just fun what? to play. What you're you're saying something better than an iPhone? Really? It, DJI they've they've got it down. It's a one inch sensor. I mean, the, wait, wait, the, everyone, everyone out there watching right now, write this date down that something's better than an Apple product, according to Matt. It's I mean, you can only get so much out of this tiny little camera and tiny little lens. They can only pack so much in the sensor in there. It's not gonna it's not gonna be as good as a one inch or two inch sensor. So it's uh, I'll I'll have all the content for you. It's uh, it'll be fun. The DJI e is uh, better than GoPro. Yeah, EV's back too. So uh, get ready for me to poo poo on all their uh, column arrays. They sounded terrible last time they were at NAM. Absolutely terrible. Let uh, me know what the new release from Pioneer is. Because I'm going to uh, uh, the show in Vegas in February. What is it? The Mobile Entertainment Expo. But the new Pioneer deck is supposed to be released when you go to NAM. And I'm just curious. RCF just released their uh, new art series, the new. They, they went back to, because they released the Art 9, and then they went back to the Art 7 Mark 5, which are the plastic ones where you could see all the components, the ones that actually sound really, really good. So I'm excited to get a demo of those. And uh, Maui is, or LD is supposed to release the 44 G3s there, um, allegedly. 
Um, so we'll find out about that because the last ones were in 2020. And uh, that's what my insider sources have told me, but nobody can confirm. So when I'm there, you'll just tune into my Instagram story. You'll see all the fun stuff. Oh, yeah. So uh, what's going on, Jeff? How are you doing? Hopefully you are enjoying yourself. Thanks for coming in. So we're going to go a few minutes late. No, no problem. We're going to go with Tommy next on the insurance question. Tommy, I know you are rocking it out there in Wisconsin, just like Brantley at wonderful, lovely clubs and doing some other places. Um, And I always like watching your Instagram with people jumping up and down, screaming and yelling in front of your booth. And always rocking out the White Sox stuff, which is greatly appreciated as a fellow White Sox fan. Well, you know, I got to bring a little bit of the hometown up there. Well, yeah. And, you know, Brentley is a uh, Packers fan and a uh, Cubs fan. So, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get knocked out by the 49ers. It's okay. Um, <laughs> it's it's, 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 uh, it's 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 a uh, <laughs> football people, football. And keep up. <laughs> um it's far as covering insurance for everything um do you get do you have insurance and if so the venues that you go to do they require insurance or do you have some amounts insuring you so i don't i don't have any insurance because a lot of what i'm doing right now is like venues where it's uh like a bar or a uh club setting so i'm not really bringing any of my own equipment in um and for venues like that it's typically the the place itself is assuming liability if anything were to happen. Uh, but I do do some like weddings and private event stuff, uh, especially uh, when I'm at home. I still have yet to be asked for insurance from a venue, but it has been something I've been looking into a little bit, especially the liability insurance, because I feel like there's a lot of things that can potentially go wrong and then you would be responsible for. I, I make all my clients sign a contract before um before an event and there is something in there about like liability with like equipment uh similar to matt where it says that if something is broken it's the responsibility of the client but when it comes to actual uh insurance coverage i i don't have insurance at this time well you might want you might want to talk i can always give you my insurance agent you don't want to talk to her and uh get covered because again uh you're in the same state of illinois like i am and she understands everything here and Sure, he has me as a DJ getting covered. It's not again, not cheap, but it keeps you sleeping at night time. Yeah, I would also hate to have to uh, scramble last minute if a venue were to ask, and then uh, uh, like potentially having to lose out on a gig for that reason. Yeah, and again, better have it and not then not need it and then need it and not have it. If you if you need a last minute or instant coverage, the one I use is Next Insurance, N E X T, and uh, they're dirt cheap, and you can sign up and be covered within five minutes. And they cover, I think, every, every I think they cover the forty eight states, um, and uh, they'll give you your standard standard policies. And what do they cover? It's just is it liability? It's, yeah, or? it's just li just liability. Yeah, they also do because uh, we in California, the LA LA school district has a have like a separate insurance policy for, I think it's molestation maybe yeah uh, or something like that child safety yep. so it's like an extra five or six bucks to get that certificate it's like a one off charge but yeah all the all the custom ones that you need like uh, next will kind of just you know they assume they they're the company that assumes nothing is going to happen so. They don't charge you as if you're a risk um, until something would happen. And then, of course, then your rates would probably go up. Yeah, that sounds like a really good alternative if I needed something at the last minute. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to Jeff in North Carolina. Um, we're talking about insurance here, Jeff. Uh, first thing first, do you have insurance? If so, what kind of like round about what coverage? I'm not exactly asking everything covered. But do you use this liability or do you have full insurance? And do you see venues asking for insurance where you're at? Uh, I do not carry insurance. I do have, uh, I've had to get it uh, for one venue in the past. So I use um, uh, insurance canopy. You can buy a $59 one time, covers you for three, three days. Um, so if I need to, you know, have to have an insurance policy per you know, the venue, I can do that. So, but uh, in other, you know, for just most of the other events that I do, I do not, I just use my, uh, you know, personal insurance. So, 
but so um, the, yeah, the, uh, uh, the, the school insurance, can, insurance canopy also offers, you know, just the three day one event coverage. And they also offer the one ninety nine a year, you know, standard uh, insurance coverage for video, video jockeys and disc jockeys. So the uh, schools that you do don't ask for insurance. Uh, one does. Okay. Because uh, I was saying earlier that here, uh, when I run into a, a facilities asking for insurance, it's usually uh, facilities are owned by uh, a municipality of some kind, county, state, village, whatever, uh, city, town. They have the, um, uh, you know, they're a government agency. So because of that, you're coming to do a wedding. They want to make sure that you have insurance. So they'll ask for it. You know, give me proof. Um uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, does it make anyone else nervous when a venue asks for insurance? No. And the reason why they're trying to keep out DJs who are, let's say, less than scrupulous. Because, um, again, it, they're, they're looking at, they want to pr protect themselves. Plus, again, it lessens their liability because when a lawyer is getting involved and, a, and something happens, and someone breaks their leg in a dance floor, even though the suit may, may, again, I'm not a lawyer, may not go, any far, may not go far, you still have liability, you still have protection, you still have, you know, your insurance company's going to have a lawyer, you're going to be represented and protected. And hopefully, you know, uh, you know that person who hurt themselves, because they're going to sue everyone, they're going to sue the floor manufacturer, they're going to sue the music manufacturer, they're going to sue everyone, so... It's to me, it's always good to have coverage again, and it protects you. God forbid something happens, you're protected, and them asking for it. It's to me, it's a formality because I'm like, just like in pull over by the police, you show, you know, when you get a t you, you, you get pulled over for a speeding ticket, you show your proof of your license, you show your proof of your uh insurance, you, you, you show that stuff. So, and that, that's it again, it's, it's a way to protect yourself, not like, oh my god, they're asking for insurance. It, it, it's it, again, they're keeping out the the bad uh, DJs. Um, and speaking of bad DJs, uh, this another goes to DJ Bradley. Uh, he brought up, <laughs> it, which is a very interesting one. He's running into his market is a oh, DJ yeah. who uh, should win the Pinocchio award. Um, Cause he tells a tall tale about his exploits about his uh, understanding and what he's done, where he's a preferred vendor at, where he goes, uh, what his experience is and so forth. And the question I have for the group is, how do you compete against someone like that? And how do you defeat within reason? And what I mean is within reason, customer comes to you and says, hey, uh, Dwayne uh, Dixon says that he uh, DJs for... Uh, all these famous people and he goes to Las Vegas three times a week and DJs on the Vegas strip. And he uh, has DJed for uh, the president and has DJed for uh, mayor so-and-so and has DJed for the king and queen and so forth. Um, how do you compensate for that? How do you get around that? So DJ Bradley, because this is in your backyard and your, uh, monster that's there that's doing this to you. Uh, how do you compete against them? I don't think it, it's not competing anymore, it really isn't. And it goes back to you know, the argument with other DJs about pricing you don't charge enough, you charge too little. So you're definitely not competing with them, but when you see it, it for example the one I was talking to you about, and I, I may have sent you the screenshot that said person individual was lying, you know, like about where he used to DJ at when I was his GM and, or the GM of the venue. And I'm like, you didn't make it to when the venue turned into legends. We booted you in a 30 minute conversation of you screaming and yelling at me and the owner. Whatever. But I would hope that, at least in my market, and Tommy, you might come into this as well, because we're both doing the club circuit, that when it comes to selling a wedding, you will see, and you will see what venues I'm at regularly, 
And alongside of that, if you pay attention to what venues I'm at or go to them, you know exactly what kind of DJ I am. You know that I'm going to troll the, uh, I'm going to play troll games. I'm going to make, you know, not necessarily mashups, uh, short edits, things like that. Word plays, the whole nine yards. And I would like to hope that what I'm doing speaks for itself. Whereas said individual has to run up this big list of just lies in order to get people to look at. And in this market, because it's such a small market, you know, lacrosse is 52,000 and with the outlying areas where maybe 95,000 people, you kind of know who does what here. If you're going to uh, get married, you know what vendor does this, what, you know, from DJ to photographer. And it's such a small market. You have seen a lot of these DJs in action at your friend's weddings. With that, that's the other reason said individual does have to lie because people have seen and heard him. And it's not all that great. On the other hand, if you look at my, if I, if, and I'm not trying to, you know, stroke my ego or anything like that, but if I look at my web, you know, at my Facebook page after every one of my say congrats, there hasn't been a couple who hasn't chimed in saying, thank you, you were the best on every one of those posts. And anything I do, I try to be, and so people will see that that are looking to book. I try to have some of that interaction on my social media page with the couples, with the venues. Part of why I have Snickers on my, you know, use my Snickers all the time. Anything to get me that interaction so you will see this is exactly what I do and this is what you will get. So with lying person over here, you don't know what you're going to get. It's such a mixed bag. And that's how I think I'm competing with it along with the other DJs in my market. Okay. I'm going to go to uh, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, if you ran into a DJ in your market that you knew was not just, you know, let's say being a little more liberal with information about, you know, their background, whatever, was it outright lying and stuff like that? How do you combat that? How do you combat when someone comes to you and says, hey, you know, uh, DJ Tommy is in your market and DJ Tommy is a, He's over there uh, telling me that, you know, he DJs for this, did that, and did this venue, and did that, and, he, you know, he can DJ upside down or whatever the, the case may be. What, what? How do you combat that? How do you uh, deal with a customer coming to you with that? Or, Well, I mean, the only thing you can do is, uh, you know, try to set the record straight. Um, but what I've seen in the past is those who talk the loudest usually perform the least. And, um, you know, those who... Uh, like to pump themselves up a lot. It's usually for a reason. And they will usually be called out at some point. And uh, the only thing you do is uh, tell the client, look, um, I'm not going to claim what they have and haven't done or can and can't do, but here's what I offer. And uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to trash somebody that I don't know much about, but I mean, if they're outright lying, I think the client will see through that. They can just, you know, basically look, uh, you know, they can ask around if they ask me, I would, I would probably tell them that, you know, yeah, it might be a little far-fetched, but you may want to, you know, ask for some, um, uh, proof, you know, let's see the gig log, let's see some pictures or something like that. So, uh, but I, you know, all I can do is fight it with, um, with, uh, offering myself and what I can do. Well, yeah, you, you can't go over there and, you know, put your finger in her chest saying you're lying and stuff like that, you know, that, that would be bad, but, you know, counteracting what they're doing and, you know, saying stuff, again, it's difficult. And, you know, this this DJ for DJ Brantley, especially in the same market, I, it, everyone stretches the truth a little bit here and there for certain things, you know, because they, they feel they can or because, you know, they think they've done something when they haven't, you know, or their, their recollection's wrong is, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a, you know, a mistake. But when you're outright lying, you know, and saying, hey, I, I could do this and that, that's whole different. So, I'm going to go to a gentleman who deals with children a lot. And sometimes, you know, kids will uh, tell little fibs. And a man who has many years in teaching profession and sees this, uh, I, I think, probably too often per week, uh, Mr. Dixon, uh, what happens if you run into a uh, DJ of yours in your market that uh, is saying that, you know, they're the cat's meow, they're whatever you want to say, put in phrase here that they're the best DJ ever. And they've done this, this, and this, and this, 
and you know for a fact they have not, and a client comes to you and says, hey, uh, I'm looking between you and DJ No Skills. What uh, what 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 do you what do you do? How do you come back that? I just tell them exactly why I do, and then I ask them what kind of proof do they have or the other guy. I'm not going to make a big deal out, out of it. I'm like, this is what you get from me. Either it's either me or them. But I'm here. Here's my card, and when you find out and need me to come in, then I'm here for you. But I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Okay. But you know, again, you, you again. I know you take a lot of pictures. I, I, I watch you know gig logs stuff like that. You know stuff you've done, and a lot of us here have proof here. You know, a lot of us have you know YouTube channels or uh, social media, and I feel that that's one of the things when you can show people, hey, go to my Instagram, go to my Facebook, go to my YouTube, go to whatever, and look at watch the video of X Y Z, or go watch, or go look at pictures. It, it, it substantiates your claim to whatever you're doing and you can show people what you're doing and you should be confident in what you can do. And if someone wants to inflate what they can do, I always say, hey, I, I have proof. I, I could show pictures of stuff we've done versus can that person do it? I don't know. You know, I've not seen that person have four steps at a wedding or have, you know, remote wireless speaker systems, you know, and, it's one of the things that, you know, I had a pleasure of uh, having uh, Tommy at one of my weddings and work with me. He saw the wireless speaker system. He saw the big setup. He saw everything. And, you know, he was there. And, uh, you know, he got a DJ a little bit. And he's, you know, in one of my videos for you for the wedding and YouTube. And it, it's one of the things that it's, you know, I know his skill and he knows my skill. And, it, it's it's just you know the level of that person that person says they can do it they can do it you've seen it you worked with them but when you see something that's not right with people when they saying stuff how do you combat that so tommy again because you do a lot of the bars and nightclubs in college how do you compete against someone who says yeah hey i i i i've dj at you know fill in big bar here you know i i you know i did apple house where uh, Brentley's done or something like that, or I've done um, one of the bars here in Chicago, you know, um, and I, I know how to get people going and they haven't, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's like, let's say it's me walking in. I, I haven't done those. I haven't done a bar in many, many years, but I haven't done one of those bars. And I start saying, I done all the places that, that uh, DJ Brentley's done. I start saying I did. How would you compete against that? You know, uh, I mean, I've already dealt with this before. I see people do it a lot. Uh, it's like a heavily competitive market, uh, especially when it comes to like DJing at bars and clubs. There's always somebody that wants to take your position, do what you're doing. Um, something that I've been trying to do to really set myself apart is I've been really upping my game on social media, especially on Instagram. Um I bought a 360 camera a couple months ago, and I've really been uploading a lot of content with that because I'm like a recap video, which I'll have put together sometimes by a filmer who I'll have come out. Uh, the 360 cameras, it's it's raw video. So what's happening in the club at that moment and like my mix and the reaction from it, when I post that, that's the pure reaction of what goes down in, in that moment. And I feel like that content is been beneficial for me to put out because I can say this person says that they do this they want to say that they play here they get a crowd going we'll take a look at my Instagram I've got videos and uh content that you can take a look at and uh let me know what you think about it and if if I would be the right fit for you in this in this venue or for this event and that's the thing is you know that having is, have the proof it helps in that same stroke though you know, like how you're saying, you know, this DJ is saying you've been to all these clubs. Since we both do clubs, one thing I've learned is to watch who I tend to talk about or refer. Because this same clown that we're talking about, Mr. Liar out of my market, created a big pain in my ass a few years back where I even had venue managers asking me about him going, why is he messaging us? So remember, if because you know you're under you're 21 now right uh 20. 20 so as you get older into the circuit you will have d 
DJs that because you're at like Saddle or any bigger places wanting to kind of hook up with you. And yeah. then they're going to start wanting to, you know, for a referral or drop my name or we'll start dropping your name. One thing you may want to do and what I'm very cautious about is saying who I will let, you know, like I will refer or let drop my name and I'll make it clear. Don't cross this conversation with me. We're not, even if it's somebody who I'm really good friends with, unless you work for the wedding company for me or somebody I'm mentoring and bringing up, I'm not trying to play that game anymore. It's bit me in the butt way too many times, especially with the clown lacrosse. Yeah, and I always love networking with other DJs, but to a point with like what you're saying too, like I try not to ask for too many favors because what I'm wanting somebody to give me, I want to be able to give back to them. And until I'm playing somewhere where say I'm, the DJ every Saturday or every Friday night where then I can let them play a guest spot or I can bring them up to travel to where I'm at. I don't want to be the guy that's always taking. I want to give as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, you, you want a partnership with other DJs, which is, and they have a good relationship, a strong relationship that you can rely on them. They can rely on you and everyone's even keel versus, you know, someone who you know, can't hold their weight. They can't, pull their they can't pull their weight and they can't do what they say they can do and you know they can't mix they can't do this can't do that and again you have someone like myself who doesn't like quick mix and can i quick mix yes do i want a quick mix no and you know if i had to go to a club and uh you know uh dj brantley and brantley is like hey i'm going to quick mix all night be like bro do you you do and but he said hey you want a dj i'm like hey you know i don't quick mix i'm gonna be up front with him and tell him so he knows and he's like, yeah, no problem. Go ahead. You know, it, it, it's not a quick mix uh, crowd. Okay, fine. You know, uh, but relying on him and his expertise in the area, he knows the, the bar better. He knows the area better. And again, that's a partnership. That's a relationship you have with them versus, you know, just coming along and going, hey, you know what? I know everything. Get out of my way. Uh, I'll, I'll DJ and I'll rock this house. No problem. Uh, and that that's the thing is that I think that's the poor attitude you have. And that's why I, you know, again with the show and stuff like that, I want people to see other DJs work with each other. A few comments, real quickly, and I, I saw the comment about, um, do, you know, do you have uh, paperwork covering equipment? I do. Uh, I think that's a smart thing to have a clause in your contract stating that if something was damaged by a um, event manager uh, or one of the guests there, that the person hiring you is liable for that. Um, the other thing also is that, uh, uh, let's see here, Fred, the uh, the godson says, if you are a good DJ and having a gig log from the venue helps, if you're not that good, then it won't. And it will show you, yes, it will show what you can do and what you can't do and how you can do it. And again, you also think that in the context of that, it's also what kind of event you're doing and what is going on in that event because every wedding is different and what people want is totally different. So it's one of the things that is it what the client wanted or if it's a screw up in the DJ, that's a, that's always a question right there. And then he also says APOC, uh, the boy wonder. So uh, he called you the boy wonder there, Tommy. So I'm going to go to California next and ask uh, Matt there. Uh, what about you? Uh, again, you're in a major market. You're in between Cal uh, you know, LA and San Diego and you probably, I'm sure you run into DJs. DJ No Skill comes along and says, hey, you know, I'm the best DJ ever. I have this cool laser so show. I have uh, dual 21 subwoofers when they don't. I don't have the lasers. And they use, let's say, your pictures or something like that. They, they take up your pictures off of your Instagram and say, hey, look, this is what I do. Uh, how do you combat that? How do you combat against someone who is obviously, you know, not just stretching the truth, but just, you know, a... Uh, uh, kind of a deceitful person uh i mean i don't have too many people that like flat out lie here it's more the thing that we hear a lot of is oh yeah i play everything oh yeah i could do that oh yeah i can do that and then like they don't yeah, their wedding either sucks or it's you they get a bad review because it wasn't the right vibe and it's like all these djs say that they can play everything but like i know for a fact I'm one of the few here that can rock. Like I have a unique style where I'm able to blend top 40 
wedding classics and EDM and then also Latin and hip hop. And it's like, nobody else can tastefully mix electronic music and keep the older un EDM crowd interested like I can. And I'm not bragging about myself, but I just feel like that's one of my really strong, like real strong suits. And so when you get these guys that are like, oh yeah, you know, I DJ clubs all the time and play EDM. And then like, that's all they know how to do. Then you're going to have like half the crowd, not very interested. So it's not so much like people just flat out lying um, as much as like, we do get a lot that like, I, I see a lot of posts in the local wedding group. That's like a closed group for Orange County wedding professionals saying, oh, I'm in search of this for this date. And it's like, what, did you promise the client this? And now you have to deliver on it and you didn't have a plan for how to deliver on that in the first place. That to me is like kind of scant, like it's kind of scuzzy because like you're basically saying, oh, I could do this and this and this and this and this. But they're not saying that they don't have that in their inventory to do. So uh, we see a lot of that. Um, a lot of like say whatever you need to to get the job to get the job closed or drop your price to whatever as low as you want to go to be 25 bucks cheaper. Like I had a lady turn me down because some guy came in like 50 bucks lower than I was. And I initially started at like 28 and then she wanted like 25. And then I was like, sure. And then she's like, actually, can you do 23? And I was like, I could do 2350. And she's like, well, he said he'd do it for 20, like 2320 or something like that. And I was like, fine, just, just go with him. That, that I agree. That's not the customer that you want. If somebody's going to nickel and dime you for every little thing like that. And I'm, I'm the last person to say not every customer is your customer. Cause I feel like if they reached out to you, they're interested and you could talk them up if you're a good salesman to make it worthwhile. But when people are like that, then it's just have a great day. Like, and it wasn't on a, a weekday where I could just flex it. It was like a premiere. It was a Sunday in November. And I like, I know I'm going to book that date. So I don't want to go any lower. I don't need this job from you right now. I don't need this $500 deposit. So we see a lot more of that, of like guys that'll say or do anything to get the job done. Say, oh yeah, we've got DMX lighting. Oh yeah, we have this. Oh, we we do this and this and this. And then it's, yeah. So we, we don't really have any like blatant liars though, but I will agree with Tommy, like social media. I had one last Wednesday that reached out and we had a consultation call and she's like, oh, what does up lighting look like? And what does this look like? And I'm like, well, here you go. It's at the same venue that you're getting married at. Here's exactly what we did. Here's a setup we did. Go ahead and ask the venue manager. She's a personal friend of mine. She'll give you a uh, high praise about me. So, you know, that was an easy one. Um, so, yeah, I definitely recommend at least take a couple clips of dancing and just content in general at these venues. I had one today at a venue I met a lot and she watched my YouTube videos. I love how you ran down, like ran through the setup and how you address certain issues with the placement at this venue. And I'm like, you know, great. I didn't think anybody would care about that, but I'm glad to see that it, it's reaching the right audience. So yeah, that's. Uh... And, and that's, that's, that's the important stuff is that, you know, someone dictating, you know, and bickering over, you know, $50 again, they're, they're nickel and diming you. And then they're going to come on and ask for extra stuff day of. Well, mm -hmm. can you do this now? Can you do that now? Can you do this now? Oh, we, I didn't pay for this, but can you do it? It's like, yep. You know, it, it puts you it in a the hard knot. spot. It was from the knot. The knot is has become the absolute lowest. The knot has become the new thumbtack. It's become where it's the site where all the bottom feeders are, uh, but it's way more expensive. And I I can't stand the knot. I get I get a flood of inquiries and five percent, ten percent maybe conversion rate compared to my website where I'm at like a ninety percent conversion rate if they reach out through a form on my website. So I'm so over the knot. It's it. I book enough every month to make it worth it, but it's, I see that $665 charge every month and I'm just like, this is outrageous. That's unreal. Yeah. I'd rather put that $600 towards more Google ads, honestly. So I don't know. I, but you know, the nice thing to run it through. I, yeah. I'm going to run it through summer. Then I'll reevaluate because I'm on a month to month so I can cancel any time. The, the nice thing with the knot is, uh, their size, they're the biggest. That's the other yeah, thing. Yeah, they're the that's biggest. It's SEO and also reviews, brings your views in there. It's nice to have that. So uh, I'm going to ask you, sir, uh, in Texas, I know uh, Texas, the great state of Texas is uh, everything's bigger in Texas. And I hope that lies are not bigger in Texas. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask you, uh, if you run into a uh, another DJ who is – saying, hey, you know what, I do this, 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 and this, and this, 
and they're basically just lying. You know, how do you combat that? How do you counteract that person who's saying that, you know, they're all this and a bag of chips when they're not? I mean, personally for me, I'm, I'm just going to let them lie themselves to the grave is what I'm going to do. I mean, they're eventually going to just send themselves into an early retirement in the, in the industry because no one's going to want to use them. No one's going to want to trust them. Um, I'm not one to really try to combat and try to bad mouth or anything like that. Cause well, they're not, already... not bad mouth them, but if they're, if, if someone comes to you and says, Hey, you know, DJ no skills is, is saying that they can do the same venue you do and do everything you're doing that you did at this venue. And I, and then, you know, they can't do that. They don't have the gear, the equipment, the skill, whatever. How do you combat that? How do you say, Hey, you know what? I've been there. I've done it. You know, how do you come overcome that at hurdle? Sure. I mean, similar to what Jeff said, I mean, I'm just going to sell myself and that's what I've done. That's what I've done in multiple occurrences. Um, <clears throat> I actually had a couple, they were, it was a, they were asking me questions and stuff like that because they had spoken to a previous DJ and um, basically what, what it came down to was it was like similar kind of concepts. Of course that DJ was a little bit cheaper than I was. Um, but the groom basically told me once he selected me and chose me, he says, Hey man, he goes, I'm just letting you know, he goes, you were a little bit out of my price range. Um, but the confidence that you had in your abilities and just the overall vibe that I got from you, like you were actually confident in yourself. You weren't cocky about it and like making over promises. He said, that's, he goes, I value someone that knows what they're worth and values themselves properly. And he goes, and that's why I, I went with you. And they were one of my most fun weddings because they were like, the couple was just so happy having a good time. And I could tell they enjoyed the process that I took them through for the planning portion as well as the actual day of. So I'm just going to focus on myself, sell myself and just let the couples know what they're in for. And then of course, if you do have videos of yourself at those venues, of course, show that to them. Um, that goes a long way as well. And um, I would also just answer any questions that they have that maybe the competing DJ said that they promised, or they said, this is kind of like a standard kind of thing as a DJ, blah, blah, blah. If they have questions for me, the couple, I'll be like, so what did they say? And then they'll tell me what they said. And I'll be like, I'm going to counter it. And I'm going to say, actually, this is the way that I would do it. And I would let them kind of just have, you know, two choices and nine times out of 10, they'll agree with me because the, what they were saying on the other side maybe was kind of a little far-fetched or a little kind of kind of weird. And once they heard another person's opinion or another person's way of doing it, then they were like, Ooh, actually, I think I like that one better. <laughs> so just focusing on myself and selling myself and making sure that um, the couple has confidence in me and that I have the confidence in myself as well. And that's the thing is that confidence or cockiness and confidence will win over cockiness and being truthful is a big thing because a lot of DJs are very cocky and they say, oh, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm the best ever. And reality, they're, they're, they can't hold, they can't hold water to it. And that's the hard part. You know, a lot of people, uh, you know, look at stuff and go, hey, you know, what about this? What about that? You know, there's a difference between cockiness and being confident. Big difference. Uh, really quickly for the, the room, uh, one other quick question for you guys with everything. Um, if someone is nickel and diming, kind of like Matt, we know Matt's stance on it, uh, the young lady who was trying to, you know, $50, $100, $200. Well, there's come on just, down, come on down. There's a difference between negotiating and nickel and diming. I don't mind negotiating, but when somebody comes back over and over to just a little bit less, a little bit less, what if we remove this, take off the fog machine for 50 bucks? Gotta hate that. So when someone when someone comes to you like that, Nick tries to nickel and dime you, um, do you try to, to work with them or do you say, hey, you know what, kind of like Matt did and say, I'm sorry, I'm not the DJ for you. I know I would not like to do that. I don't mind working a little bit with people. But the thing is that, you know, I don't want to play the car lot game of let's go back and forth with pricing. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you, uh, Brylan, um, I'm going to start with you. If someone's coming up to you, again, Matt and I are, are similar on that idea. If someone's nickel and diming you, going back and forth and berating you to go lower and lower prices, what do you do? At this stage of my career, 
I feel comfortable at the point that I don't need every gig that it's ever thrown at me. So if you're going to nickel and dime me, I'm just going to kindly refuse and um, just say, this is, this is what I'm worth. This is what I value myself at. Um, if you're willing to come up and uh, meet that price, I'd love to work with you kind of deal, but I don't nickel and dime anymore. But like you said, I am willing to work depending on certain circumstances and stuff like that, but hardcore pawn, like, nickel diamond kind of stuff trying to work your way to get that no i'm not i'm not working on that anymore okay and see what you just said brings up you know part and parcel when they first reach out to us by the time we are pitching them a price 95 percent of the time they should not care about what price we're throwing at them if we have done the right work to sell ourselves and Mitch Taylor, who uh, used to be the president of Midwest DJs Live, put it up to me. He's like, you are selling yourself more. I mean, yes, you're selling your gear, but you're selling yourself and your capabilities. You and you, some, and that's why we have our packages as well, the way we have them lined up. Or at least I do. I have four now. And one's my super, you know, bottom wrong pricing. But most couples, once we've gotten to the point where can you send me your packages, I'm generally not pitching my very small, you know, my very bottom package. It's my, you know, gold, silver, and or silver, gold, and uh, platinum ones I'm pitching. And with the silver and the gold being the ones picked up the most now. So, I, you know, in that same regard, if we've done a good job selling ourselves, nickel and diming shouldn't come up. And I don't know how everybody else gets them, but I've noticed a real big change in the leads I've gotten over the last six, eight months. I mean, in addition to the leads kind of shrink, you're not seeing as many as we did 23 going into 24, but all the leads I'm seeing are super qualified. Like by the time they've gotten to me, they know what they want. Now let's just, here's the package. We, we are a good fit. Let's just get this out of the way. Call me crazy, but that's how a lot of mine have been as of late. Okay. So you're a no then, right? Oh, yeah. There's no way I'm going to start playing the nickel and dime game. And Tommy is in the same position. If we don't book a wedding, there are, you know, hundreds of solid clubs in our state where we can go get four or five hundred bucks a night at. And it's not wedding money, but do that, you know, three nights in a week and my bills are paid. So there's my trade off. I don't, and they're more fun to be at clubs, and, especially. And it's easier too. You don't have to yeah. pay the full setup. Prep work is almost non-existent because I'm already listening to half the stuff I'm spinning. So it's a win-win either way. As long as you play Pound Town every five minutes, you're okay. I I haven't played that song in four months. Easily. But if I have to hear Ski one more time, I'm going to shoot somebody. Mm. No, no, no violence. Uh, Dwayne, what about you? If you uh, run into someone, try nickel and dime you. Uh, do you say, uh, uh, sorry, but, uh, I'm not your right DJ. Yeah. I, I, I could say I finally graduated to that point. Um, because when I was just a bedroom DJ, you know, I wasn't really taking it too serious. I let people do that. And I have found those are the worst clients. When you, when you seem to give them a discount and do stuff for free, they expect the world and they always constantly coming up, bugging you. So I finally got to the point where this is my bottom line. I throw the number out there. I try to work with you, but at, at, after a certain point, then I'll just throw it away and just not deal with them because it's not worth the headache. Very true. Tommy, uh, I think I think kind of uh, Riley said what you uh, feel, I take it. Uh, no, you don't negotiate. Yeah, not really. I mean, I haven't run into the problem too much in the past. I think part of the reason for that is because my prices are lower, but it's going to be interesting what happens this summer or like going into this upcoming year because I am raising my prices pretty significantly at this point um, for private event stuff, at least. Uh, and then when it comes to working out a price with like certain venues, like bars and clubs, that's kind of a whole different animal because I feel like each place has their amount that they're willing to pay and then 
it's up to you whether or not you want to take that or if you want to try to give them a higher number and then you're having to provide them with some sort of, you know, reasoning as why you're worth that, which comes down to a lot of the social media for me. That's that's where I point them to. All right. And then, Jeff, finally with you, would you uh, get, go back and forth? Someone try nickel and dime you. I try not to. I try to avoid those. Um, usually I try to educate them that, you know, if they're going to lower, uh, if they want a lower package, they're not going to get what they want. And uh, so I'll try to educate them that way. If they're going down from my lowest package, then I don't want to deal with them. That's my lowest, that, you know, that that's the price you got. You know, when you go to a, buy gas at the gas station, that's the price. You can't negotiate that. So that's the lowest you're going to get. So I, I, I have a bottom line. If, if they're, if it's a wedding, um, it's very little wiggle room in a wedding. I mean, it's um, there's there's so much work that goes in that's involved, you know, uh, pre pre show and um, you know. So I, I usually tell them that you know if you're going to want a lower price, you're going to get a lower package, and that's probably not going to work for you. And here's why. Very true. And then uh, in the uh, chat, I will not go back and forth with any client. I will respect fully decline. Um, I can deal with initial negotiation, but that's it. Yeah. They, they say, Hey, you know, can you do this or do that initially? Yeah. Fine. Great. But they keep saying, come back to you and asking you, Hey, give me this guy. Give me this. There was a, I can't remember where it was. I want to say it was a national news broadcast. Um, they were talking about weddings and uh, they basically said in the broadcast, and I had to find it. I can't remember where it's at when it was, it was years ago, but basically they uh, said, Hey, you know what? Instead of telling a DJ that's way, tell him to party. And I'm like, I, when I heard that, I, it's like, Oh my God. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. Oh uh, yeah. We're going to have a ceremony. Okay. Well, you're having a wedding here. It's not a party because party is just basically, Hey, give me a couple of songs. I'm like here and stuff like that versus, Hey, I'm having a processional, a recessional. I'm having a foreign seeming of mothers. I'm having this, having that. Uh, yeah, and you have Seth over here, Seth over there. We have a cocktail in this area. Yeah, that's much more elaborate than, hey, I'm having a party uh, at my house for our, our son's graduation from high school. Nice, and I need Tommy to come and spin, uh, uh, you know, uh, some songs and have a fun time versus, hey, Tommy, I'm having a full on wedding with 300 people at you know this uh country club and i need uh, one step for the ceremony one step for a cocktail uh and one step for the main ballroom and that that's the thing is there's a huge huge difference between the two of them and that news reporter like you know unfortunately like a lot of news reporters don't know the subject they're just reporting and going by what they think and instead of doing some research to find out that there's a lot to go into a wedding they say hey just say it's a party and now you have people that, you know, say, oh, well, yeah, a wedding DJ, it's like $300 or $500, wherever the market is, price, every market is a little different. And then they, they come to you and you find out, oh, wow, it's not that cheap because what you offer, you offer a lot of work, you offer your expertise. That's part of the price is your expertise, what you have. So when you run into a DJ who is less than scrupulous, who is out there saying they've done things that they haven't done or they can do stuff they can't do. Or you run to a DJ that's not insured. Again, that's why they are the price that they are. Doesn't mean that they're better than you are. It means that they're trying to pick up the scraps and they're trying to do anything they possibly can to get someone. And unfortunately, us as DJs, the legitimate guys and girls out there working, uh, we all have to deal with it from time to time. And all you can do is say, hey, this is what I can offer. This is what I can do. So with that said, you know, I want to thank you guys all for tonight. Another great night, another great show, and another great time. And I'm going to actually ask tonight uh, if, uh, Jeff, if you could take us out and take us home tonight. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great week. See you next time. Thank hey, you so much.